All right, y'all, welcome back. It's Albert LeBeau. And uh, the lock we're going to take a look at this time is right here. It is Master Lock number 21, and it shows right here on the bottom of the lock. Now, this is uh, this one's a little bit odd for Master Lock, uh, in my opinion, anyway. These laminated Master Locks, uh, there's not many that they make that are rekeyable. This one is. And uh, I could be wrong, but I believe it's the 21, which is this one, and I think the 25. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, and the 25 is slightly bigger, but again, it's a rekeyable lock like this one is. So pretty cool. I like it. Uh, maybe not the, the best of core in this one. Um, it does have one, two, three, four, five cuts on the key. You can see right there. So I'm guessing it's a five pinner, but not the best of bidding on that one either. That could have been better, but they vary. But yeah, it is rekeyable, so I like that. Um, and it picked this one up from Mr. Lock, and at time of purchase, it was $13.89. So again, not bad, really, for a rekeyable lock. Uh, not not too bad a price, in my opinion. So uh, let's uh, see if we can't pop it, and let's see what's under the hood in this thing. What do you say? Let's grab us a uh, tension tool here. And for these, for this type of keyway... Let me show you. Since I'm picking off this bottom left and you got to kind of go around that curve, for me, I like using the Sparrow's Sliver Picks, and I'll show you why. They're very thin. If you're not familiar with the Sliver Picks from Sparrow's, they are in 12 thousandths of an inch. They're quite thin. I only use them for special occasions. You know, they're not crowbars, but they fit really good in this type of keyway because you can actually go up around that corner without the pick you know, uh, sliding, grabbing on the edges of the, uh, the keyway there. So it works out pretty good. And, you know, to each their own on what kind of pick you use. I just like this one. So let's see what we got in here. Let's uh, get a feel for it real quick. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Maybe we'll start in the back then. Maybe not. Four. There goes four. I think we're on two, one, let's see. Five. There we go. Four. Three. I might have overset that just now. Up oh, one. Let's see. One. Two. Whoop, there we go. Uh, I did not feel any security pins in that. But again, it's rekeyable. You can repin it. Uh, personally, I'll probably slap a couple of spool pins in there. But really, uh, yeah, they may come into play because it's going to have some really uh, short key pins on that one. So let's see. I wrote down these. I did my homework beforehand. 332nd Allen tool. Which is going to be right here. Got an Allen screw down here. Bada boom, bada bang, baby. Let's see what it's got under the hood, huh? Get that out the way. Get that out the way. Uh, I have not disassembled one of these yet, so this will be a this will be a first. Okay, pretty much, uh, okay, look at that weird thing. Oh, and they got that squared off so it doesn't spin. That's cool. Not very thick of a retaining plate, but, you know, for the price, again, let me grab one of these keys. Okay, that's strange how that spring is in there. Oh, and it is a crimped core, but it looks like we'll probably be able to just rotate it. All right, so that means I'm going to need a special follower. All right, let me grab a pinning tray here. Let's bring it down right there. Let me bring this down a tad. And Bobby Keys, he made me some 3D printed followers, and he made this one specially small so that it fits these cores that are crimped. So I'm hoping that's what we're going to be able to do here. I got it rotated. You can see, if you don't know what I'm doing here, let me grab something to point with. On the uh, the uh, 
cylinder, or the Bible we call them right here, it's got this flat spot. Whoops, sorry, right there. So if you rotate the core itself, where the flat part on the bottom of it lines up with that crimp, you can usually push them out. I've got it lined up, and it does push out. So, you know me, I'm going to use a shim. I always use a shim. If Bosnian Bill taught me anything at all, it's always use a shim. Always. Rotate it around, jam it in there, grab our follower, and the pins are going to be over there. Yes. We got her. All right. So just for the sake of uh, not making the video ridiculously long, I'm going to speed this part up. I'll get them laid out, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we are back, and as I expected or suspected, there are no security pins in this one. Uh, let me get a pointer, and we'll just go like so. You can see all the driver pins. Let me see. All the driver pins are standard. But again, for the price of the lock, and it is rekeyable, I, I still think it's okay. I can slap a couple of security pins in here. They'll probably come into play because most of these uh, key pins are pretty short. So, uh, you know, I think the spools up top would come into play really good on this lock. Uh, and again, that's going to uh, depend on the bidding of your lock. Uh, they're not always going to be the same. Where is the key? So, yeah, they won't always be like this. So... Uh, anyways, I think it's okay. That is the Master Lock number 21 I picked up from Mr. Lock. Um, I got to give the lock a thumbs up because I think the price fits. So uh, that's it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so. All the cool people are doing it. If you want to be cool, you got to subscribe. Thank you.